So today, I wanted to delve into a very important topic in macroeconomics, which is the difference between absolute and comparative advantage. So I'll go and run through the definitions that you need to know for the edXL spec in a moment. But just to kind of understand where the theory stems from and why it's important to understand. So imagine that I am a country and you guys are also a country and we trade two goods. And let's assume that you are better at producing both of those goods than I am. In other words, you can produce more of good A and good B compared to me. Now, that means that you have an absolute advantage in the production of both goods. So very simply, absolute advantage is simply where you can produce more of a good or service compared to another country. Now, prior to the theory of comparative advantage, it was assumed that because you were better at producing both those goods than I am, there's no basis for trade. Like, what can I contribute in terms of the two goods? You can produce both of them better than I can. A guy comes along by the name of Ricardo and says, actually, that's not true. And the reason is, is because do you guys agree that whenever you dedicate resources to producing good A, you are sacrificing a certain amount of good B. What is that? Well, it's something called opportunity cost, as you know, from theme one. So I want to do two things. I want to show you guys the maths. The definition is written there for you to write down. But I want to show you a question from theme one. So it's actually from June 2013, unit one, old spec. But we're going to use that as the basis to understand. And then we're going to do a theme four question together. So it looked like this. So I'm going to draw out. Roughly what it looked like, it had the following variable. So one pound. It had. So we had bedrooms over here. And then we had bathrooms over here. And it looked like this. So the first thing it had is this is a straight line. Four and two. And this was Bob. And over here we had two and four. And this was Wendy. In hindsight, I now realize that this question is about Bob the Builder, but there we go. Right, so Bob and Wendy. Now, these are two PPFs. One of the things that confuse people in that exam is that PPFs do not need to be curves. They can be straight lines. So this is just a PPF illustrating the maximum amount of bedrooms and bathrooms that each of these players can basically produce, right? Now, just a bit of a vision in terms of theme one. How do I calculate opportunity cost? Well, opportunity cost is always expressed in terms of the other good. So for example, if I want to work out the opportunity cost of producing a bedroom, I have to express my answer in terms of bathrooms. Very important to understand. Vice versa, if I say, what is the opportunity cost of producing a certain number of bathrooms? Your answer must be expressed in terms of the other good, in this case, bedroom. Right, if you lay out your working out in the following order, you will always get this right. And I will show you guys another question where we can apply this to. Pick a player. So let's choose between Bob and Wendy. I don't know, let's do Bob over here. And I want to work out the opportunity cost for Bob of producing a bedroom. So what I need to do is ensure that bedrooms are on the left-hand side of my equation and bathrooms are on the right-hand side of my equation. So I'm going to put bed over here and bath over here. Okay, question number one. If Bob does nothing but produce bedrooms, how many bedrooms can Bob make? Well, do you guys agree that Bob, the maximum number of bedrooms that he's capable of producing is over there? He can produce four bedrooms. That's the upper limit. Now, if he produces four bedrooms, that means he makes no bathrooms whatsoever. So how many bathrooms did he give up? How many bathrooms could he have produced? Well, do you agree that he could have made two bathrooms? So I put two next to bathroom. Now, I want you to express opportunity cost in terms of one unit. You want to go for every one bedroom that he makes. How many bathrooms does he give up? Well, if I write the number one there, how did I make the number four become a number one? Well, I divided it by four. I therefore need to do the same thing on the other side of the equation. So two divided by four, I'm quick maths is 0 0.5. What did we just work out in words? In words, we worked out that for Bob, for every one bedroom that he makes, he sacrifices, he gives up half a bathroom. That's his opportunity cost. Right, let's do the exact same thing now for Wendy. So if I put Wendy over here now, let's do bed and bath again. Okay. If Wendy does nothing but produce bathrooms, so bedrooms, how many bedrooms could Wendy make? Well, do we agree that obviously it's two? So that's the upper limit of how many bedrooms she could have made. How many bathrooms does she sacrifice, though, if she were to do that? Because remember, if she produces two bedrooms, that means she's not making any bathrooms, but she could have made four bathrooms. So I'm going to put four over there. Therefore, for her to make one bedroom, so now I make the two become a one. I divided it, obviously, by two. I do four divided by two. I get, very basic maths, two. In other words, in words, for every one bedroom that Wendy produces, she gives up, she sacrifices two bathrooms. Right, on the basis of that, 
Who has a comparative advantage in the production of bedrooms? Whose opportunity cost is lower? Well, very obviously, Bob. Now, I could have easily told you that Bob should specialize in bedrooms and when he should specialize in bathrooms just by looking at this data. However, I wanted to make sure that you understood two things. One is the maths, and now why this is such a powerful theory. Because if you think about it, Bob will now specialize in producing bedrooms, and Wendy will specialize in producing bathrooms. If we assume the monetary value of a bedroom is the same as the monetary value of a bathroom, so let's assume that they have the same value, what is the obvious trade that they should do? So imagine I'm Bob, I've made four bedrooms, and you guys are Wendy, you've produced four bathrooms. How many bedrooms should I give you and how many bathrooms should you give me? Because I don't want nothing but bedrooms and you don't want nothing but bathrooms. The obvious trade is that I give you two bedrooms and you give me two bathrooms. Now look at that point. We end up therefore with two bedrooms and two bathrooms. So think about two two. So if I go up from here and I go across from there. Do you guys agree that two two is basically where I put that X over there roughly? Yeah? Notice something about that point. The interesting thing about that point is that it was outside of both of our PPFs. Neither Bob nor Wendy could have achieved this by themselves. And this is why that theory is powerful. Because if you specialize in what you have a comparative advantage in and then trade, it will result in outcome levels that you were incapable of achieving by yourself, which is why this is a really, really powerful theory. Yeah? Right. So now that we've done the basics in terms of the maths, I want to show you guys a past paper question where this type of question can come up. So I'm going to stop here there and go to the expert tuition website. Right. In the expert, on the expert, expert tuition website, um, under paper two, we have the specimen of paper, and I want to walk you through the question together. So we've got specimen over here. Okay. Question number five has two parts to it, and that's the question that we're going to look at. So it has this. Some of you may have seen this from school. It's a very good question to make sure that you do ahead of your exams. It says, Colombia and Zambia each produce copper and emeralds. The production possibility frontiers below show the two countries' production capacities for these goods. With reference to the diagram above now, the first question is really, really straightforward. We'll still do it. The real question that we're going to really be looking at is this, but we'll get there in a second. So it says, with reference to the diagram above, which of the following statements is correct? It's a good idea to pause the video at this stage and attempt it yourself. But if you've unpaused it now, let's do it together. A, Colombia has an absolute advantage in the production of copper. Well, is that true? Well, Colombia can only produce 100 million tons of copper. Zambia can produce 500 million. So clearly that is not true. They don't have an absolute advantage in the production of copper. Leads us very nicely to the answer itself, which is B. Zambia has an absolute advantage in the production of copper. Well, yeah, because literally they can produce 500 million, whereas Colombia can only produce 100 million. So that's literally the answer. Yeah. It's not C because Zambia doesn't have an absolute advantage in the production of emeralds. They only produce 500 kilograms, whereas Colombia produces 1,000 kilograms. So Colombia has an absolute advantage in emeralds. Neither Colombia nor Zambia has an absolute advantage in the production of emeralds. Again, that is not true because clearly Colombia has a comparative advantage, so absolute advantage, yeah? Right, let's deal with the question that actually is far more challenging, which is this. The question says, using appropriate calculations, explain which country has comparative advantage in the production of emeralds, full marks. My method that I showed you guys a few minutes ago really comes in clutch here. So let's understand what we need to do. Because we're trying to work out who has a comparative advantage in emeralds, you need to ensure that emeralds are on the left-hand side of your equation. Now, earlier I was doing bedrooms. Now, emeralds are on the left-hand side of the equation. So I'm going to annotate over here to the best of my ability. Um, I can't... Yeah, let's do it here. Right, okay, so I'm going to do it here. Hopefully you guys can start seeing it as I write it. So let's start with Columbia, okay? And I'm going to write E for emeralds and C for copper. Okay. If Columbia produce nothing but emeralds, how many emeralds can Colombia produce? Well, clearly, they can produce a thousand kilograms. So I'm going to do a thousand over here. Yeah. And then over here, we've got how many units of copper would they have sacrificed to make that happen? Well, they could have produced 100 million tons. So we're going to do 100 over here. All right. Remember, we want to express it in terms of one. So we're going to go, okay, for every one kilogram of emeralds that Colombia produce, how many tons of, or how many tons of copper do they produce, uh, uh, give up? Well, how did I get a thousand to become the number one? Well, clearly I divided it by a thousand. So now I do a hundred divided by a thousand. Good maths, you can use a calculator if you're not sure, is 0 0.1. Right, we just worked out. In other words, for every one kilogram of emeralds that Columbia produce, they sacrifice 0 0.1 million tons of copper. Right, so the exact same thing for Zambia. Put Zambia over here now. Get an E. And let's put C over there. Right. 
If Zambia produced nothing but emeralds, how many units can they produce? Well, theirs is very easy. It's 500. And how many units of copper do they sacrifice? Well, they give up 500 million tons. Therefore, for them, for every one kilogram that they make, do you guys agree that obviously I divide 500 by 500, I did six, same, same to the other side. It's just one for one. Yeah. All right. So if you look at our numbers, who has a comparative advantage in the production of emeralds? Clearly, it is Colombia. And you just write that in words. Now, the matter, if you lay out like that, by the way, you'd get all the four marks. But to be safe, I would also add the following kind of in words. I'd say Colombia has a comparative advantage in the production of emeralds. As for every one kilogram, notice that I'm using what they have in the on the axes. So for every one kilogram of emeralds they produce, they sacrifice or they give up 0 0.1 million tons. Again, I'm using the, the, the terminology. 0 0.1 million tons of copper. Whereas for Zambia, for every one kilogram of emeralds they produce, they give up 1 million tons of copper. And it's as simple as that. And that is comparative advantage and how to work it out in an exam.